snatch, 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 snatch the out of the devil's kingdom. Oh, snatch, 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 snatch the out of the devil's. And if they don't want it, don't fuss it. And if they refuse it, then dust your feet out the door and keep stepping until you find someone who trusts. The name of the Lord is where I'm hidden, and all I do is. Oh yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three. Shouldn't let you do this. <laughs> I, do, I don't, I just, I've been waiting to do that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, what's up everyone? Of course, uh, it's about that time. Time for the Meet the Snatches podcast. And of course, I remain... The lovely, Shama, what would you mean? beautiful, <laughs> Nikki La Oye, oh yeah, and I've got by my side, the fine boy boy. By himself. my side, by my side. Yeah, what's going on? What's really going on? I go by the name of Snatcher. <laughs> Doing the Godzilla big year with Mrs. Ooh, Godzilla of course, big of course. Do you know you say a lot of, of course, I say of when course. you're on camera. I know indeed. when you're on camera. Indeed. Indeed, of course. Of course. <laughs> Well, oh I've been doing this for a long time now, so, you know. The, so that explains the of course. It's a media personality, right? Oh, right All right, right. Me the, why am I always saying me the podcast? <laughs> me the snatcher. Is your minis media personality training that is coming to us? <laughs> okay, it's the Meet the Snatchers podcast. I'm oh, sure right. you guys enjoyed oh. the very last episode, which was our very first episode, which we called Nikki's Story. Mm. Dealing with divorce. It's not like one Nigerian for Nikki story. Like, this is Nikki story. <laughs> a life of turmoil. You're not serious. <laughs> this is not a life of turmoil. <laughs> no, no, that was not, that's not the soundtrack of my life story. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, well, all right. Yes, all but right. of course we had um, uh, a lovely time, you know, uh, even though I was all smiles, it was actually quite emotional for me. Yeah. I, I just know how to sometimes, you know, bury these things. And, you think. Mm, mm -hmm. But seriously, you know, having to yeah. finally talk about the my divorce and going through mm. that season of my life with God's help. And I just give God all the thanks and all the praise. And I know there are a lot of people out there who've been getting so many comments, so many messages, mm -hmm. you know, since the episode went out. I want to mm -hmm. say a very big thank you to everyone. And um, soon enough, even on the podcast, we'll be taking questions and, you know, trying to use our own little God-given wisdom to speak and encourage to as many more people as possible. We're going to be doing that. But yep. today, it's all about snatch a story, mm -hmm. dealing with the loss of a spouse. And um, Snatcher, so today I'm the interviewer. Oh yeah, as the <laughs> tables have been turned. No, actually, the table actually remained where they were. So the tables didn't literally turn. You know, I'm having that blink, blink. It was a cartoon, you know, like blink, blink. <laughs> yes, okay, the tables didn't turn. Okay, right now I'm handing over. Okay, the mic is in the phone, so I'm not <laughs> okay, handing on any so, mic to mm -hmm. you. But um, okay, let's start with this. Yeah. Hmm, losing a spouse. Even coming from someone like me who lost a uh, dad, mm -hmm. I know that definitely losing someone is someone you love, someone you've been close to. Is it can be very, it can be one unforgettable experience of a lifetime, mm -hmm. okay. and how much more someone that you've actually started building a family with, someone you've actually had children with. And someone that you were even running a vision with. Mm. And um, it's actually amazing that the two of us actually got married the same year. Our first marriages were actually in the same year. We're just even a few days apart. No. It was few... Okay. I got married in October. You also was December. December. Yeah, well, it's still a few days. Because it's not... You know, a few days is two. Well, you know, a it's just... A couple of days, few days. You, you can't okay. say... October, uh, November, December. Okay. Well, it, 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 oh. the child they born in October and the child they, they're not mates. They're Auntie, not <laughs> brother... No, yes, I think I think oh colleagues. They're not even colleagues. Okay, okay. Oh, we got Dan married Dan months apart, but it was actually um, funny to realize that you know we got married the same year, yeah. and of course now we're at that point where we actually dealt with a form of loss, and yours was the loss of a spouse. Yeah. And um, for a lot of people out there who have not really heard your story, 
how it happened, how you dealt with it. Could you just give us, you know, a brief um, talk on how, you know, what happened mm -hmm. and how did you deal with that initial shock of everything? Um... Um, I say gone thank you very much for the question. <laughs> um, to be honest, uh, I don't know. I don't know where to start. Um, a lot of people don't know, but my my late wife was possibly the single most, as in the closest person to me. But I say ever, yes, ever. She, I mean, we, we. Mm, okay, I didn't think it would be this difficult, but okay, mm, let's see. Um, you know, what a lot of people don't know is that, or didn't know, is the fact that, um, I mean, before we got married, she was, she was really bubbly, she was busy, she was, you know, doing all sorts, but, you know, and the night, I remember the night of our wedding, was when it started. Wow. Yeah, was when she really got sick. I mean, well, not really, but we have traces of it, you know. And as months went by, when she, when she got pregnant for, for our first child and when she we knew, okay, or oh, okay, was it, you know, she was pregnant, we went to the hospital and um, the baby was at Etopic. Um, yeah. to say if she was growing out of the womb and whatnot, and we had to discharge ourselves. And I mean, we just signed a release form, like nah, wow. and all that. But but through that part, we were like, okay, this pain you're feeling is it because of the pregnancy? What's going on, and all that. Then later, of course, the child came to full term. We went back to the hospital. That was a miracle. Yeah, that 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 was a miracle. Each and every one. Maybe one day we'll talk about that. Each and every one of the my my, my kids. There's a story behind wow. them. And, but, um, she, so, but we started having one issue after the other health-wise. And things like that can really put a strain on, on a marriage. Yeah. But we were good. I mean, wow. we had no issues. She's the sort of person that would sacrifice for anyone. I mean, yeah. she would like, hey, how, I mean, Someone like, hey, I have a friend who, who's who been kicked out of the house. She has nowhere to stay and looking for someone to help out. Like, okay, let him come. I'm like, wait, we already have two people living with us. Like, <laughs> oh. we'll manage. And that's one thing she always says, we'll manage. We'll get a blow, blow up bed. I mean, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll do something. So she was always sacrificing for people. She was always going the extra mile, irrespective of how they treated her, irrespective of how they saw her. So she was, she was an amazing person. So... I I didn't really think that I needed to hang out and meet people or have friends because she was my guy mm. and all that. But, you know, there was one sickness after the other. We were nursing one thing. There was a time she had hernia surgery. We did the hernia surgery about six, eight times. Wow. Because they just didn't get it right. We kept going, that must have draining. Been a lot. It, was, it was hard. And it was hard because... There was all sorts of gynecological issues, issues with the babies. There was endometriosis. There was just one thing after the other. And so I was a full-time carer. And, and caring for someone who's sick and who's been sick for a long time, six, seven, eight years, wow. is not... Sometimes you don't even know. I mean, a lot of people tell me that they wouldn't be, that they don't know how I did it. That it, I mean, it's me. Ah, no, if it's I can't. There's no way I could have done it. But you know, and I mean, we had so much support to the extent that it got so bad one time. My my sister came and she she just moved to South End from Ireland just to stay around to be mm. able to help out and all that. But you know, even no matter how much people come to help, yeah. it's still you. Yeah, it's still you. And you have Very four children true. and. One thing is, I remember when I was leaving everything, leaving music, taking a break from music, moving to the UK, um, to start a family. Um, first, of course, a lot of people thought it was crazy. And, um, but when you know this, you don't know the entire story, but you know God wanted you to move. Mm. 
Yeah. And usually when you hear things like, oh, God said I should move and all of that, then you hear a testimony about, I got to the airport that one man came <laughs> and said, the Lord said I should give you 100,000 million billion pounds dollars. That guy, maybe God, but he didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> so oh he didn't God. show up. Our, you know, and we were just in that, we, you know, we, 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 were, we, we were basically, you know, just doing our thing and just supporting one another. I mean, we just had, we had, we had so much laughs. Even when things were tough, we were happy. Always happy. And we, you know, when, when we started having children, it was similar as if I was going on, people were not even so that pow, 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 pow. <laughs> you know, people would think that all you people do is just have children. <laughs> but, but, but. But now when you look back. When I look back, and every single time I have looked back in my life, I found out that I got to a particular junction. And I realized, this was what was prophesied to me at that point in time. I remember when I was coming moving, I, one of the, uh, my pastors that I spoke to was uh, Chris Delvin. And Pastor Chris, we call him Dadu. And Dadu said, you're going that. He said, I could sense your spirit, that your spirit is heavy. I could sense that. You know, I remember that night we, wow. we sat at the Oriental Hotel and after a service at, I think, the World of Waterbrooks, and we were just talking and he, I told him I was, I was moving. And, and he could sense, and he was like, I sense that there's, there's this burden, your heart is heavy, that you're going for a training. You're going wow. to the island of England for a training and hmm. God is going to, you know, and I started hearing words from people later on when things got, I was, I was like, God, I should let you know that it's not the devil. I'm the one doing this to you. I'm deepening your roots. Wow. You know, so I kept getting into junctions and points in times in my life where I realized that, oh, this was what God has said. So, but it was difficult to explain to other people yeah. when you say, no, God said I should just be here for now. Yeah, true. God said I should do this true. for now. It sounds like one, I'm just trying to, you know, when people say, it's so annoying that people have misused that God said. Yeah. So every time we say God said, God said, we're like, saying, oh, yeah, that's, that's where the argument in. ends. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but I really needed to be with people who could sense my time and my seasons. Mm. And I got to a point where I like, God, I don't want to have gotten there all because I, what I noticed is even when I try to sway from it, God just keeps kicking me back into that line, into just to align. Wow. And so we, 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 yeah, she was going through all sort of that. And I would say I would jump to a point where, mm. <laughs> because we spend a lot of times, the pictures that I look at till now, and I, there are pictures of her in the hospital mm. with all the machines and all the, there's some pictures where I would have to, because she'd be like, oh, I can't stay too long without my children. We'll bring the children to her lap while all the machines were all logged on and tied up on, onto her. And, and um, it was difficult. It was hard. But the truth of the matter is, while I was going through that, while I was, it didn't feel hard. It didn't feel it was difficult. It was just like, don't worry. Let me just keep doing we, it. We're, we're going to be all right. We're, we're going to be all right. I mean, there was no issue with me having to take care of the children. And of course, because she also wanted to, she's used to being busy. She's used to, so she would doze up on the morphines and all the medication they gave her just to be strong enough to, so that when people come to be seen to do stuff, you know, not to be seen, but, but to, seem you know, to you be know, okay. You know, she doesn't, you don't want, when you don't want to be telling people, hey, I'm sick, I'm not feeling fine. That's why it's my husband that is vacuuming taking care of the children. Wow. So like, people are having just those up on morphine. No, I'll do it and she'll be struggling to do it. And, you know, just so that no one is asking, ah, oh, what's wrong? Are you okay? Oh, she well, was just trying, trying to be okay. She to wanted be to be okay. okay. She wanted to be okay. She wanted wow. to be strong. She wanted to do all that. And my own is, Madam, you will be strong. She, me, don't worry. When you're strong, I can go on a trip to Bahamas. <laughs> but right now, let's focus on your health. And, there were so many things that were happening all through that part. And shout out to um, the Liberty Church, Pastor Shola, Pastor Bimbo, the church yeah. where, where we serve. Uh, they, they have been a tremendous support. Yeah. Shout out to my immediate family. Shout out yeah. to her family. I mean, we, we, family is really important. And family was there. 
And sometimes your family also is not just the people in your household. Yeah. Also, you know, God gives you a church family. It's great to have a good church community. But let me fast forward to a point where we, she was like, I, I've been having so much pain. I mean, she's been treated for chronic pain and some other things. We've been um, getting all sort of treatments and all, but she was like, I have the pain in my stomach. And the doctor said it was gas. So we thought it was gas. So it's gas. She was like, okay, let's work on getting this gas out. Medications, still undergoing treatments and all of that. And like, these guys, let's go and get a better scan. Eventually, we went to a private hospital and the doctor was like, look, that was about November, stroke December. Like, you're going to have a baby in March. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, wait, wait. Wow. It, was, it was like, how is this possible? All the medication, all the treatments, how is this possible? Wow. And the first thing she said to me was, we can't have this. I, and she, that the pain is so much, the struggle, the 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 pain she's going through, and my major fear was God, if this child comes out, and this child is has a, some sort of deformity because of all the medication, how, because of all the medication and all the treatments, how am I going to handle taking care of her because she's sick, and that's my full time work, I can't wow. do anything else but take care of my sick wife and take care of a deformed or maybe a disabled baby. How can you? And the word I got was, um, as the rain comes from the sky and makes the earth, but does not go back void. So is every word that comes out from the mouth of God. And like, and I got peace. Like, she told her he's going to be fine. Wow. He's going to be fine. And his name is going to be rain. Man, he's really fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, he has to be fine. He's like, I want your daddy. Oh, wow. and, and I said, and, and he said, his name's going to be Ray. <laughs> and because she, she was worried. She was like, I'm not connecting with him. This is the first time that I'm about to have a child and I'm not connecting with the child. Wow. Usually the moment I find out that I'm pregnant, I'm connecting, I'm buying baby stuff. I'm so not like, oh, you will connect and the baby's going to be fine. And the baby came. Mm-hmm. And but and it, they were both in the hospital for about two, three weeks. They're about wow. we had to even do the naming ceremony in the hospital. I remember Pastor Bags came around we did it in the hospital because and she had all sorts of things um, all all over her and it was so bad. And then she started getting better after all of that. She started getting better and slowly went back to work. And then six months after that, I mean with. We had injections we were giving her every night. We had to be injecting her every night. She would still use her painkillers and they had to give her the highest grade. They couldn't give her anything better. Um, and then we got to a point where she went back to work, was working from home and still load up on our meds, still trying to, you know, do all of that. I was still doing the school runs. I was still doing every other thing. Just, okay, just focus on the work. I'll sort out the children. Just make sure your health is good. And then one morning, okay, a few days, she was complaining about her breathing. Because she was talking and she was heaving and, you know, her breathing was really, really worrisome. And we went to the GP and they told us to get a nebulizer. Um, and we got the nebulizer and, um, and we told us to get a nebulizer. And so I had to order it from Amazon. And the morning it was meant to arrive, I woke up that morning, got the children ready for school as always. And then she, I just heard her banging on the bed. I rushed into the room and she was gasping for air. She couldn't breathe. And she immediately called the ambulance, called everyone. The ambulance came very quickly. They tried to, you know, put all the machines, all the gadgets. They called for the air ambulance. They're thinking, okay, maybe they will take, because they think thinking before they bring her down the stairs, take her out, maybe they will take out the roof. Like, look, dude, if we can lift the house, let's go, you know, and, and they tried, she tried to, I called everyone, hey, we prayed, and they tried to bring it back, and tried to, but she passed, she, she passed, and it was, I had the children in the other room, and at that point, I, I, I wanted to pray. I did pray. I 
I said, God, no, don't let her go. Don't take her. Not now. And, you know, all the thoughts, all sorts of thoughts came through my head. My brother was like, no, he, my brother came and bless him. He started speaking in tongues, started calling her body forth. And I was wondering, is God going to do it? God, do something, show up. And um, I had the kids, I'm like, the children, there's four children over there. The baby's just six months. Um, it was tough. And, but she passed. Mm. And I looked at her. They gave me a moment with her and looked on the, because by that time they had moved the bed. Um, because they were still trying to get her to come up. And, and um, yeah, she was there. She was dead. She was cold. Her mom was on the phone. Her mom was livid. Um, I had to go into the room. Ideally, maybe people would have waited a couple of days or whatever. But I had to speak to the children. Mm. I felt wow. that I had to tell them what was going on. I mean, with the way we treat them, with the way we raise them, I, I felt that I had to let them know and I had to, we had to, whatever we needed to deal with, let us all grieve together as a family. So I, I called them, I, I went to their room, they were like, oh, what's going on? And they were really used to ambulances coming to the house, taking mommy to the hospital. So they didn't think that there was just something it was so one different one from, yeah, from, yeah, and... Um, so I had the conversation with them. I just told them, you know, well, you know how, how we talk about angels and how God loves us a lot. And we love mommy, we love daddy, but we can never love mommy or daddy as much as God loves mommy and daddy. And sometimes God's like, hey, I want them to come home because I miss them. And he's like, hey, let's make her one of the angels. And what do you think about that? And they're like, oh, mommy, we're a superhero. But seven got it. She stood by the window and she didn't say a word, but she was teary-eyed. She, tears were just dropping and I just hugged how, her. How old was Seven at that time? Um, she was about seven? Yeah, seven was seven. Seven was seven. Seven was seven. Seven was seven at that yeah, time. Yeah, seven was seven and um, Trinity, Zion, Rain, and we, and they cried. I prayed for them and I knew people would come into the house. So I asked a friend if they could come stay for about a week. So I didn't want them to come and see oh, the crowd crying. And... because I told them it was a thing of victory. They wonder why people are crying. Like we will miss her, but she's always there looking down on us. And so um, I was in that place and the first thought was fear, fear, loneliness. I wasn't angry with God initially. Well, initially I, I wondered why she didn't, he didn't wake her. I wonder why he had to take her. But I wasn't angry. I had questions and I wanted him to answer. And which he did. But, but then immediately I felt fear. There were so many people that came. My church family came. My, my sister was on her way to the GP when I called her in Ireland. She just packed that, went straight to the airport, jumped on a plane and came straight up. Left everything she was doing. Left the kids, left the everything. Came in in like that and you know the house was before you knew the house was crowded because that's the kind of person she was she my, was my late there, wife was there for everybody everyone. she she would she would literally and, and and the funny thing is i wish i was i just thought to myself i wish she was here to see this because she used to wonder that look that i give i give so much i give but i don't feel like i receive back, back I, I don't i don't get that love and I told her that you do. You just don't notice. Maybe you're looking at the places where you're given. But if you look in the, in, 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 at the big picture, you'll find out that the only reason why you can keep giving is because they're giving you back. Because yeah. if you have nothing to give, what are you giving if no one is giving back? And all that. So um, it, was, it, was, it was painful. But the trick was for me to stay in that place of darkness slide into you know the idea was for me to slide into the darkness and remain there the song I was singing that came to my head straight was I don't know why it was Chintok Shaku's that's a Chintok song it was I got the light of God in me 
I've got the light of God in me. I've got the spirit of the son of God. I've got the light of God in me. I don't know if he actually wrote that song, but I know I heard it from him because he's written so many amazing songs. But that song came, kept, and it was ministering to me. Oh. And it was like, because God does not, God did not turn darkness into light. Mm. But from darkness, it called forth light. Yeah, it was from darkness. So light was already inside the darkness. Yeah. No matter how dark it's going to be. Yeah. So he called forth light. So I was trying to reach into that darkness and call for light so that darkness will not overwhelm me hmm. because that's what was happening hmm. i was i would you know people would come and comfort me in my head i'm thinking eh, yeah it is well abby you know that that was the most hmm. annoying one it is well abby because your wife did not die you come you and your wife held hands and you're smiling at me and telling me it is well hmm. why didn't your own wife die you know it's- i was sliding into that darkness and I just kept singing that song, whatever. Mm. And and in a few hours, maybe a day or two after, I got it. I got it. I couldn't explain it. I got it. I was, but I, people were around and they expected me to be mourning. I got it. I really wanted to jump up and rejoice. What did you get? Hmm? What did you get? Why she had to go. When it was time. Why it was time. Why I shouldn't be sad. Why I should rejoice. I, I didn't see her. You know, people were like, oh, I dreamt and I saw her. I, I didn't see her. Wow. Maybe one or twice I dreamt, once or twice I dreamt like, as if she was still there. You know, as if I went to the hospital and, like, and she was like, hey, why are they putting me among dead people? You know, but, and all that. Because I still had to sleep on the same bed where she passed away for like two, three months. Wow. And, but I had to, I have four children. Three of them need to go to school. They had, it was Christmas period. Um, we we're, we're planning the funeral. After the funeral, it was Christmas period. We had to go. They still had to do their school, school plays. Like life still has to go on. Life had to go on. Because the thing is, is, if I actually slid into darkness, they will suffer. Because everybody was there. My family was there to help me. But it got to a point in time, everybody had to go back home. Mm. Everybody would have to go. From Christmas, after the funeral, on uh, Christmas day, Christmas day, we had to... We're like, oh, I don't want to stay home. We stayed in the hotel, me and the kids. And the hotel was just... It was this I realized that this hotel is just five minutes away from the hotel. Because we met at a restaurant in the hotel. Um, oh, where you guys met? Where we met. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it was, it was a terrible... It was the worst Christmas of my entire life. You know? Wow. It was the worst Christmas of my entire life. Because we, we came out to... I was like, okay, let's just drive around and go have lunch somewhere and... As we drove five minutes, the closest hotel we could see was just that, that Carl Plaza exactly. Hotel. Because we wanted to go to that. I was like, oh, I remember there's a restaurant. Then I remembered, oh, that's the restaurant we met. Like, no. <laughs> you know? Wow. I'm like, guys, let's go back to the hotel and order pizza on Christmas Day. And, of course... Well, you, you actually said something earlier, and I, I didn't want you to forget. Oh, okay. You said you actually... Got to God finally let you know it. the reason why you got it. Yeah. What was it that you got the that it. God told you? Okay. Um, I couldn't really put it to words until f- it would took me till February when I um, Pastor Fred Williams of Icon Towers called me and said that, oh, Dado is around and he would he says he wants to see you. And um, and after before the funeral and all that, my pastors came. Uh, first of all, we had Pastor Ade came, then Pastor Shala, Pastor Bimbo, and they, you know, they just gave me comfort. Hmm. They gave me comfort, and you know, Pastor Shola was talking like that's about a door, you know, you know, just it, it, God. There's no difference for in God. God doesn't know the difference between death and life. I mean, he's, he lives in eternity. And but when, when I sat with Christopher, we we talked for about nine hours. We we first of all had a concert, then we went to his hotel, and. He was like, when you were leaving Nigeria, you, you, there was a burden in your heart and it was heavy and you didn't know. And I said to you, God is choosing England as your island. of." And he said that, he gave a lot of analogy, but he made me realize, and I, I saw back, and what that light brought for me was the fact that God knew who was going to take her. Hmm. He knew at a point in time that she would have to go. We, we, we all go. And he knew that her time, time. was this. So, he needed her to, one, have those children. He needed someone to come show her what love was. Hmm. Have those children. Take care of her and guide her to him. Hmm. I felt 
that I did not have. I mean, yes, I've been a Christian for God knows how long, but I, I felt that. I mean, she and she used to say to me, "You were ordained. You were this. So why are you not start something, do something?" And blah, blah, blah. I was like, "Look, I'm not in. I'm not." desirous of a title i don't want to be a pastor i don't want to have a flock i don't i just felt that i needed uh, there's this assignment yeah. and all that i didn't know that she was the assignment wow. and initially i was trying to yes yeah, she was she, she goes to church she was she was a protocol officer in her the church she used to go to before i put her out of there and all of that but in terms of the way that i felt that you needed to christ needs to be formed in you i felt she wasn't there and initially i was trying to hammer it on her that look if you guys, why are you listening to all those uh, motivational preachers? Listen to all our truths. And I was trying to, you know, force the knowledge. And God was like, slow down. She was like, dude, dude, dude. I know it's yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, sometimes at night when we're sleeping, she'll, she'll be watching series. I'm like, no, I need to, this, this atmosphere, let's, because I like to play Bible scriptures. Then she'll come in. And we are all Christians, praise the Lord. And all <laughs> turn off the Bible and watch her favorite series. And, and, but the thing is, God was like, look, you are trying to use her. And she said it to me once, and I felt, she was trying to use her to practice your preaching. And all that. <laughs> but she's not seeing you do nothing in terms of how, let her see you spend time mm. in the word. Mm. Mm. Let her see you declare something and it happens. Let her see, oh, oh, Finances is tight. Oh, we don't know where where um and where um the rent is gonna come out from. Like, okay, don't worry, God will sort it out. And, and then you just kabash and you come out and it happens and it should get or someone is sick, you lay hands or something. Enough of the talk, action, you know. Yeah. And you know, and because of that, I I just started spending more time with God, and then then a friend of mine um when when word MC got saved. I think God yeah. also used Word MC because Word MC and I will spend two hours, three hours sometimes on the phone just talking. She has so many questions. She would just be yes. bombarding me. So oh. yeah. I'm like, and see, and she was bombarding me questions and most of them were an earshot of her and she would hear and she would be like, that thing you said, you know, I've been thinking about it. And I'm like, yeah. One day I'm like, it just clicked. Oh, she's guessing it until she now started. She's like, oh, can you... I need to hear that message. You know, then she, my, my, um, the church we go to Liberty Church was doing the Bible school. She enrolled for the Bible school. She enrolled for this course. You're talking about Jay, right? Yeah, and 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 so she now stopped. She went from playing worship to now playing some messages. She now focused on those. You know, on you literally watched her grow. I watched her grow spiritually, and then she was having a conversation. Um, where MC came to spend the. Um, one day I was talking to Wedemsi on the phone. And she said, instead of all these two hours on the phone, why don't you tell her to come and spend a weekend with us? And we can do use the weekend to do the entire Bible study. We we'll have well Bibles done. and all of that. And I'm like, okay. And Wedemsi showed up and, and then we watched a movie called The Shack and she's just started breaking some things down. And hmm. I was looking like, I should drop an offering right there. She was just, she was like, just preaching. She was just preaching. Like preach, preach. Yeah. Preach. And at that point, and there was something she now said, which I use excerpts of it from one of my songs, that, that um, no matter how much we love mm. our spouse or our children, we can't love them like God does. Mm. Very true. And it's because we are afraid that of God, afraid to trust God, that he has the best for us and the best for them. That's why when he, when he takes them, our greed does not want to let go. Mm. When he takes them, we think that, oh, that's final. Because this is what we know. This is all. So, and when he takes them to him, we 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 think, oh my God, it's over for them. But they are there thinking, I'm sorry for. It's you guys. I feel sorry for, but and all that. And he's like, look, he doesn't owe you an explanation. She said he doesn't owe you an explanation for mm. taking them away, but just know that he has the best interest in at heart. In, in, in our, at heart. Mm. So what I got was my j- job was to prepare her for him. Mm, prepare her for him. Prepare her for him, which I did. Presenting her to him as a bride. Mm. Willing, ready, and acceptable. Preparing her, and I presented her to him. So at that point, I felt that my job was done. Mm. At that point, I felt I did not know while it was going on that that was my job. Mm. That's the only thing that hurt me, pained me, sort of, in the sense that 
I wish you had I, I don't want to be in a place where by it would have already happened because of God's mercy, it let that happen. What if his mercy thank God for his mercy? Mm. Because what if his mercy did not lead me there or I refuse to receive that and did not prepare her well enough? Mm. I would she would have I would shoot. Well, I, 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 I feel like God would have made sure Man, that yeah, God, God because he's so merciful. God is so, so merciful. So he will kill, keep her. Will keep so, her. so, but um, for me, I just thought, God, I don't want to know after the fact. <laughs> Please be telling me so that I will not waste time. That's why now I had to deal with procrastination in my life in terms that procrastination is pride. You believe that you have tomorrow. You mm. believe that tomorrow is sure. That's why you are saying that your pride is telling you that I can do that tomorrow. So it's better we tell just, someone about just do it now. We need yeah. to do it now. Do it right now. Right now. Because now you is don't all know, we have. You don't have tomorrow. Hmm. So, so sometimes when I kick against some things, I'm like, no, I need to do this now. I remember, hmm. I remember my fourth year's birthday. Hmm. I, I wanted to... She said to me that, look, you've been... My dream was to send you away. Oh. If I were, my health was back together to send you away so that you can just have that time. You need, you need to rest and heal and be strong again because you've been taking care of us so long. But I want to celebrate you. I want to have a party and all that. And the first I'm like, oh no, don't have a party for me. Uh, let's do it when you're better. What would people say? They'd be like, hmm, his wife is, is not feeling too well. He's doing party. party. <laughs> He's doing clinical. Is that what's next? And she was, I said, like, look, Hey, we'll do 50. For 50? So Jalaya will play. <laughs> we'll, we'll scatter the whole place. We we'll, said, I want to do it. Oh, I, I remember for now your fourth year, she actually did something very special. She reached out to She reached out to me as well. She reached out to everyone. She took my phone while I was I still thinking, have the message oh. on my phone till today when she reached out to me and she asked me to do a video recording. Yeah, I was shocked. You know, it was you. Yes. It was Frank Edwards. <laughs> there was yeah. um, Protec. Everybody. Pastor Laurie. I was like, where did you get all these people? It's like, I looked in, I, I took your phone while you were asleep. I looked in your DM. I said, yeah, my DM. <laughs> How you did not say anything? I said, nah, I'll save you. <laughs> I'll save you. I was like, <sighs> you're not serious. As if you have anything inside your DM. Okay, well, sometimes you don't know that. You know, well, I'm, I'm going to take it. Hey, hey, well, I? you know, um, what, how were you able, you know, because I know that's one major thing that mm. people will be looking at right now that, yeah. okay, now you're actually, you, you've finally been able to heal. Should I put it that way? I kind of feel like healing is a continuous process yeah. because even, even someone like me, like I said, I, I lost my dad t 10 years ago mm. and I still miss, miss him today. Sometimes I still have those moments, but the truth is that it's been about over two years now and you know, you've finally been able to not move on, in quote, but move forward. Move on. That, that's the best way to put it. That you've been able to move forward. How were you able to do it? How were you able to find the strength, you know, mm. coming, having to be a single father, take mm. care of four kids by yourself? <laughs> How were you able to do it? I've been asked this question a lot. And I, to be honest, I don't know. Because I, I could say, I could say you know, where, you know, I don't know. I, I always say that he gives grace. Yes. Because the thing is, God actually does give grace. He gives grace when the burden, there's a lady, did, I think she, she was blind. She was deaf. She, she had like maybe every sort of sickness you can imagine. Wow. And she wrote this poem that, I, and it's a very lengthy poem, but he gives grace when the burden grows weary. When, you know, so when it's hard, we added affliction, he gives added um, um, grace and all of that. And he gives, he gives, he gives again. Because I, I didn't think twice. Because I felt that all those times where she was ill and I was taking care of the children, if at that one point I got to a point, place where I'm like, hey, I'm a man. I'm the man. How can I be taking care of children? How can I be buffing children? How can I be doing all this? I'm the one. I know. Because even the times when she was pregnant, initially, if thoughts came to my mind, like, uh, pregnancy, you no know, be sickness now. You're pregnant doesn't mean... But she, I could feel the pain yeah. because I, I mean, I could feel the pain she was going through. And, and I thought to myself that, so if, if I did not, if I wasn't there for her, for the children, if I wasn't active in their lives, 
in her life, it would have been a lot difficult, difficult because that was a training I was going through and I did not know. I remember you also mentioned you learned how to cook. I learned her. how to cook. I mean, because 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 she 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 needed to balance in the kitchen when she's doing that. So I'll be there. I'm like, you know what? Let me cut, show me how to do the onions. I mean, my mom already thought everybody in my house can cook at least the basics, but there's she has been a an Be amazing chef. chef. <laughs> she uh, she's a very proud one in the yeah. sense that she can only eat her own jollof rice. Cook jollof rice while she would judge your jollof rice. <laughs> and jollof rice would judge every jollof <laughs> rice anybody cooks and all that because that's when we started Yimata, a catering business. And so even when we started catering business, we'll take orders with coolers and all of that. I would cut all the peppers, grind oh. everything, cut the meat, fry the chicken, whatever. Clean it, cut it, do all the preparations. She would just come and add us a jazz, put the, everything there, and you know turn it and all of that. So, so we were doing it together. So I watched the way she do it. So that's why my jollof rice is mean. Oh okay. yeah, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. testify. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so I was, I was, I, there, I was, I never felt like I'm a man. I shouldn't be doing this. I also never felt like. I am helping you take care of the children hmm. because it's our children. Why am I the one? Why, how is it that I'm helping you when it's our kids? So I'm not helping hmm. you. We are taking care of the children. Hmm. If It doesn't matter who is doing it at that point in time. And because she really didn't want to tell anybody about the nature and the length and, you know, when people come because she didn't like that. Hey, sorry. So, so, so we... We we try to when when we have guests and all of that, which I'm like, look, forget this thing. I don't sell it where anybody should like go and say, I went to Snatcher's house. So you know that it's Snatcher that is the one serving us rice. It's the one uh, cooking the You didn't care about that I because you're just, serving in your home. It's yes, your home in your Marriage serving. is worship, marriage is serving. Yeah. So so I served her, I worshipped her. Oh. And I did I was as led by God, I did everything that I could. And she was my only friend. I didn't have anyone to go and say, oh, let me just unwind and go and hang out with. No. But honestly, I have to give it to Stacha. You're actually a very strong man because mm. what you did for Jay was, mm. it, it was very rare. I'll, I'll actually say it like that. It was very rare in the sense that you stayed with her through those years of her being sick. You actually went on taking care of the four kids. And I was, I'm also talking from experience, of course, when I had to come in, to help out with the kids at the time of the lockdown, I was literally looking at you with a different eye. I was like, "Now my guy, if it is now with a different eye, like now my guy, if it is a snatcher the rapper, okay, now I'm seeing snatcher the homemaker, snatcher the father, snatcher the guy that can cook and everything." I'm like, and it's so obvious that being with Jay actually brought out a better version life, of yeah. you. It actually brought out a better version of you and helped you to actually come to this point of just being. An inspiration also to other men out there who right now have lost a spouse. And they're like, how do I do it? How do I move on? And, and, and my desire, if for those who have lost a spouse, and also for, for men in general, my really desire is to inspire in the sense that, look, guys, forget this. It's yeah. not about fem- feminism or toxic masculinity or whatever, whatever. It's really about yeah. seeing that this is my home yeah, this is my family home. i'm not helping I, when i can help my wife to hold her bag but when i'm cooking or cleaning the house i'm not helping her cook or clean the house i'm helping us it's our house it's our house when she's adding to when she's paying the bills or paying that bills and he's paying this bill paying, we're not helping each other pay whatever we're taking it's, care of the it's house. It's our house. Yeah. So, so I, I, I mean, look at the story of um, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph was a carpenter. I don't know. We don't know whether his carpenter shop blew after the, you know, whether <laughs> it blew, whether it hammer. <laughs> well, he will hammer because he's a carpenter. But ah, <laughs> yeah. okay, guys, get that. But, hammer, but, but carpenter. the moment his job was to protect his wife, yeah. protect his child, mm. guide, lead, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit as far as his family was concerned. Hmm. Irrespective of what other people thought, but as far as his family concerned, yeah. God was giving him directions. Go to Egypt, go and hide the child at this moment, go and do this at this moment, um, you know, accept this child, blah, blah, blah. His job was to protect his wife and his child. Hmm. And after, from my understanding, after Jesus was found in the temple, I think it was four or ten, can't remember uh, right now, after he was found in the temple, 
where he was lost for a couple of days. We never heard anything from about Joseph anymore. Yeah, we actually didn't. His job was done. It was mm. out the same. Mm. He, his, his job was done. Mm. I mean, so, so, so the thing is, as far as your family is concerned, God, so God gives grace. Mm. I kept just kept going. And people ask me questions like, did you grieve? How did you grieve? Mm. And I don't know what people mean by did you grieve or how did you grieve? I hear that stages of grief and all of that. Mm. Did you go through it and all? I, God dealt with me in his own way, in his own time. But the thing was, I cooperated with him. I, mm. yeah. I was able to really say, can't do it alone. yeah, I know I'm busy. I know I'm on the go. But God, I need you to fix me. This I I need to focus on my kids. I need you to fix me as we're going. Yes, and this is the me, first time you're doing it alone. I'm doing yeah, first time I'm In doing court. it alone. If she got no sick, she was there. Yeah, you know, someone to talk to, someone to gist with, we'll laugh and all that. And I have gist, and I have some gossips and some liberals. <laughs> but nobody to get more with because nobody will really get it and all that. So, but I had to keep going, and it was, it was, it was. Difficult. No, I'm not talking it was hard. No, no, no. I mean, the times was hmm. difficult. And we, the children and I went through so many things. And I made it. And I couldn't have done it without my, my, my siblings. Couldn't have done it without um, my church family. There's something my sister says. And the Bible says that. Um, he said the solitary in family. Yeah. But when my sister said it, well, after my um, wife passed, she said, she used the word, he sets the lonely in families. And I saw it all. Like, yeah. Yeah. You and, say that and, a lot. Actually. Yeah. Since then, I just, I've been saying that a lot because I saw family. Yeah. The women in my church, without being provoked, without being told anything, mm. the women in my church just started sending groceries for about a year. Yeah. Nonstop. Every week. Every week they took turns. Yeah, I never, I've never seen that kind of thing before. No, be small time groceries. As in cereal, they <laughs> I was actually <laughs> around during the lockdown, a, so I a, saw it. A grocery wow. list. Yeah, because then I had people, random people, just from church. I had people from church who some were our friends, some some, and then our own friends too. I just just started showing us love. Just started showing us love, right front and center. So in that area, we were covered. We were covered. Because we had a family unit. Yeah. Some were blood, some were not blood. So it just church, shows that even during that moment, it's very important to be to, surrounded yeah. by people that love you, They're people love, that yeah, care for that you. That care for you. Of course, when all is said and gone done, the, the Coco Gong Gong would stay. Would stay. We're still, so I'm, at the end of the day, I'm still, I'm still dealing with waking up t- um, 2 a.m. the morning with my daughter saying, I wish mommy was here. Mm, yeah. And then having to talk to her. Yeah. I mean, to talk to each and every one of us, because we, 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 the, the issue is we started treating our children as individuals on yeah. their own, not a group of children. So I know what's, how Seven's mind works, how Trinity's mind works, how, how Zion's mind works. And Rain is still a baby. I remember the day that, um, I think it was during the lockdown, I was mm. around when Zion one day, at that, that time she was just five years old, mm. and Zion came and said, Mommy's an angel now. Yeah. She, and she had never said anything since. Mm. Yeah. 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 And we were, yeah. we were both shocked at it, like, okay, where did this come from? And, and she, some of those things just like... Mm. And I remember oh, it, and, it hit him really hard. And, I, I was around us at that time. And, he, and I allowed the pain. I yeah. allowed it. Yeah. I like, God, just work. I'm so, you know, sometimes I'm like, God, I'm busy right now because I'm trying to make food. I'm trying to change pampers. And I know that my heart is still breaking. So as I'm doing it, you too. Keep put yourself to work, be working. I'm changing diapers, <laughs> oh. you two be, be healing me, be, healing. be working, be, you know, yeah. because I'm like, I don't have, there's no time. And, and one thing I really asked God was, I, f- I mean, I thought the vision was with her, that me, her, we do da, 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 da. We had a ministry to do, we had stuff to do. And now that she's gone, if not her, then who? Then when? Then what? Then why? But we thank God. Hmm. We thank God for where? He led us to. Hmm. And the next phase, I'm sure that's what we'll talk about next time. Yes. Wow. So that's, that's, that's kind of my 
story is off. I think I went on and on and on. No, and it was on. quite a story a because this is the first time I think you're also gonna be saying it also on a like large that. scale where you're it's it's your platform this time around, so you can say it. And um, mm-hmm. I'm sure that you know we've been able to, you know, encourage you know um, widows and widowers out there who have lost a spouse, and that's what today's episode of the Meet the Snatches podcast really is about. Yeah. You know, helping or should I say? Snatch is sharing his own story about how he was able to deal with yeah. and so how he's still and, and dealing. He's dealing. Because most people yeah. try to run away from God. Mm. I ran to him mm. because where am I going to go? Where, Nobody, where there's, go? The answer is not there. Yeah, there's really nowhere Who else has the answer? Nobody has it. So where am I going to go? Mm. So, and I'm out of options in the sense that mm. the only person mm. that I want to run away from is the one that has the answer. Mm. So why am I deceiving myself? So I'm going to run to him. Run into if God. I'm angry with him, I'm going to run to him and be angry with him. He's still yeah. in his presence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If he's good. Yeah. So whatever he needs to do, he's going to do. If, if he's like, look, you shouldn't have said that. I know I shouldn't have said that, but right now I'm really angry. But he will sort me out right there. Right there. He will sort you out right there. Right there. Definitely. It's, um, it's been an emotional... Mm. Snatcher was holding back his tears. I could see it. <laughs> no, it's I, for me. I know yeah, that no, the tears actually dropped, mm-hmm. you know, but um, and that's why at a point I was just rubbing his back here because definitely talking mm-hmm. about the story, um, God has been faithful, God has been good. Yeah. Um, um, the truth is, time doesn't heal, no. God, heals. God heals because the truth is, it would still. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you still have these feelings and because this is someone you built a lot mm-hmm. with, you never forget them for mm-hmm. life. You never forget them. But the truth is God has to be the the one that holds you together through yeah. that loss. Yeah. And surround yourself with family, people that love you, family and friends, people that love you, your your church family. Yeah, be, be people, active in your church yeah. family. It's it's important. I know there's the lockdown. But but the thing is, be, be there for people. Yeah. Because, sorry, I just need to say that. And to everyone who's been there for me, those who supported financially, who supported, yeah. like, being there, just calling to check up. Um, this is how it works. As a principle, heaven has recorded that. Yeah. You sat with me in there. Oh, yeah. So yes. because of that, you can't go through the same thing. Amen. It's not possible. It's not possible. Because you sat with someone who went through that. It's yeah. already recorded that. You've passed that stage. Amen. And it, affliction can never come near you. Amen. So when people and so if you know if, if someone you know has lost someone, be there. Be there. For Sometimes them. don't say anything. Just, just be there. Yeah. Don't say it is where. Just be there. Hold the hand. Look at them. And also, Smile. um, I know there was something you've not mentioned. I know you quickly say that people need to be very mindful of the things they say. Oh, I, I was thinking we'll do an episode of the things people uh, no, have said. No, I'm just saying well, like yeah. a brief like. I've heard. I've heard. When, also. <laughs> I'm just trying to say the things that people say when someone has lost mm. a spouse or something. There are some certain things people would say to you sometimes. Like you, we need you. to be very, very mindful oh, yeah. of the kind of words. Sometimes it's better Sometimes not to just say anything. say anything. Just say people hugs, love, just hearts. God be with you. I'm praying for you and all of that. Mm. But because at that point in time, we need to be sensitive. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. People need to yeah. be sensitive at the time of loss. Mm. Be very sensitive. Wow, Snatcher's story has been quite a story today. And mm-hmm. we hope that it has inspired you. I hope yeah. it, we hope it has, you know, encouraged you and motivated you. And of course, keep the questions coming. If you have any questions you would like to ask Snatcher. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely take out time in one of the podcast series to actually address questions. We'll probably do a yeah. live one day. We will do a, a live, YouTube one. live one. Day. Yeah, YouTube yeah. live, Instagram live, yes. all yeah. kinds of live to answer questions. Answer and questions. if you want to actually send um, um, questions, you know, to to us as well, you can actually send it to the email, of course, um, at the bottom of the screen. You can actually, oh. <laughs> you know, send oh, your questions I mean, or your comments, good. or if there's anything you want us to talk about on the show, yeah. uh, you can actually. Send Send it to us and make sure you keep following us at Meet the Snatches on Instagram, Meet the Snatches on YouTube and all. You can listen to our podcast on all, everywhere you actually get to listen to your podcast. podcast. And of course, make sure you follow us at Nikki Laoye, So Snatcher. Snatcher. And of course, we'll be catching you on another exciting episode of the Meet the Snatches podcast today. Thank you so much Thank for joining so us. Much Thank for you for being here. We know today was out. a long one. But was it long? It was long. Yeah. You will, you will see. It will not be long. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So regretfully, they tell us, but firmly, they compel us to say goodbye to you. Goodbye. See you next episode. A, B, C, 
Yeah. To say goodbye to you. No, was it be bow bow? I think you want the pirated one. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Meet the Snatchers podcast. We hope it was an inspiring one for you today. And you know what? We look forward to hearing from you. You can actually send us your questions and comments via email, meetthesnatchers at gmail.com. Keep following us on all our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. We look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Meet, Meet the, the Snatchers, Snatchers podcast. podcast. And until next time, stay blessed. Bye, guys.